Today this video is going to be about the T-34. Let's start in the beginning. It all starts with a man named Mikhail Koshkin who made the Soviet Union a new tank to replace the T-26 and all the models of the BT series. His prototype was named the A-20. It was equipped with 20 mm or 0.8 inches of armor, a 45 mm or 1.77 inches gun, the production model used a Model V-2-34 engine, a less flammable diesel fuel engine than the other tank that was called the V-12 configuration. This tank had a unique feature where it could drive without its tracks making it an armored car, this tank also had slope armor making tank shells have a less chance of penetrating the tank. In 1938, while the A-20 was still in development, there was a border conflict with Japan, the conflicts tested the T-26 and BT series, and Soviet tank designers would learn from the conflict. The T-26 and BT series proof, poorly during battles low caliber guns were able to penetrate the armor and Monaco cocktails, could easily make the flannel engine on fire. Because of this Mikhail Koshkin would convince Joseph Stalin to make another prototype tank. The second prototype tank that Mikhail Koshkin made was called the A-32 originally had 32 mm or 1.3 inch of frontal armor, it had an L-10 76.2 mm or 3 inch gun, and the Model V-2-34 diesel engine in 1939 both prototype tanks were tested, the A-32, having more weight, was about as mobile as the A-20 which is less heavier. The A-32 had a few more upgrades 45 mm or 1.77 inch of front armor, wider tracks, a newer L-1176.2 mm gun, the A-32 in 1940 weighted 26 tons, max speeded 53 km per hour or 33 miles per hour, range 400 km or 250 miles, crew capacity 6 driver, gunner, loader, assistant loader, commander, and assistant driver for its advantages the A-32 was picked over the A-20. The A-32 changed its name to the T-34 that we know today as. The last test was to impress generals, and Joseph Stalin the T-34 was going to drive from Kharkiv to Moscow which was about 900 kilometers or 600 miles. The designer Mikhail Koshkin was driving one of the two tanks going to Moscow during this adventure, he caught a disease called pneumonia and died most likely caused by breathing the carbon dioxide from the engine in the tank he was replaced as chief designer by Alexander Morozov. When the tanks got to Moscow they were all impressed, including Joseph Stalin and then there would be an order for the T-34 to be mass-produced on. March 31, 1940 On June 22, 1941 the largest invasion call operation, Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union, at this point there were about 957 T-34s and additional 1887 would be made at the end of the year. The tank was really good because of its slope armor it was able to survive shots from tank shells like when there was a case where a German anti-tank gun that fired about 22 shots at the T-34 and still came out victorious. Also the main gun was really good at destroying tanks from the Panzer I to the Panzer IV the main gun would be upgraded to destroy the Tiger tank and Panzer V. They would also outnumber the Germans in tanks because of how quick and cheap the T-34 can be made. Despite what I just said and how successful the tank was, there were problems like how in early models only the one tank in a company would have a radio so commanders would raise up flags to talk to other commanders and other tanks. Also the tank crew were poorly trained, and had poor tactics compared to the Germans even though the Soviets added more tanks than the Germans, the Germans would still win tank battles, even though they were outnumbered. Some variants of T-34 were. Model 1940, T-34-76A, is the one we were talking about, Model 1941, T-34 slash 76B had thicker armor and a new gun, model 1942, T-34 76E thicker armor, many minor manufacturing improvements, model 1943, T-34 76D, E, and F more ammunition and fuel, very minor armor increase. New hexagonal turret, nicknamed Mickey Mouse by the Germans because of its appearance, had turret roof hatches open and some had a new commander's cupola, model 1943, had a new gun, model 1944, with simpler gun, radio moved from the hull into a turret with improved layout and new gunner's sight, model 1945, produced from 1944 to 1945, with an electrically powered turret traverse motor, an enlarged commander's cupola, and the TDP smoke system this was the most produced variant of the T-34. The T-34 was a very good tank for the time, it was considered a next-gen tank and influenced many future tanks the T-34 still sees combat today like in the Russo-Ukrainian war that's happening right now there were sites of T-34 being used during some battles. 
Comment below of what thing I should talk about next and subscribe for more.